now it's become very important to uh, teach the student not only the uh, professional uh, knowledge content, but we have to uh, actually uh, to, to, to teach them a lot of uh, scientific reasoning, critical thinking, one of the most important skills also creative thinking. Uh, in uh, this global competition, most of the students will not face one, uh, one uh, job through their life. They will move from job to job. So the skills, which is scientific reasoning and creative thinking, will help them to uh, fulfill their position uh, with different uh, fields. So it's become very important actually issue to uh, uh, try to coaching the students to have uh, uh, creative thinking, critical thinking, and all uh, scientific reasoning uh, methods. Uh, today we will talk about the importance of creativity for human society, uh, the importance of creativity in physics, physics psychology of creative thinking. Creative thinking example, uh, we will talk about application of the psychology of creative thinking to physics. Uh, we have some examples from Nobel Prizes and some history. And then we talk about modern physics. Also, we will have uh, applying uh, creative thinking uh, uh, rules for uh, active learning uh, uh, fund uh, activities. And then we have uh, we discuss the education research for fostering creativity. And then we talk about teaching, uh, uh, applying this education research result for uh, in one example uh, uh, in teaching example which is measurement and then we're discussing uh, how we can foster creative thinking in physical uh, physics classroom uh, in the earth we have a lot of species but only one species which is human begin to control the the earth and to, why he able to control the earth uh, he have a special is one of the most important it, it's actually he creative he trying to, uh, to to solve any problem he faces in his life by creative way so uh, in this case here we see how he was able to uh, creatively try to make uh, firing uh, which he actually uh, having in nature he knows that the fraction can uh, make uh, heat he knows that fire can help him to get very good hot lunch. Uh, so he said, okay, why if I make a, a, a fraction, I can actually have a fire. And in this case, I have very good hot uh, uh, lunch. He, he don't have microwave yet, so he was to have, to have to do hard work to get the, the hot lunch. Uh, because environment, we always facing these difficulties. He actually found that when he have uh, uh, external uh, dangers, he go to cave. But cave is not existing everywhere in the, in the earth. So he will, if he wanted to go to Toronto, you will not find cave everywhere. So he, he creatively able to simulate the cave by using building. Because he, there is no privacy here, he make only sea wall so he can uh, have some protection. Actually, creativity is accumulated. Even to protect the, 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 not only uh, the human life, but the, the very important secret and the, the survival of the uh, dead body of the king. They spend a lot of time to create the same cave, but with a lot of creativity, when they built this very huge building. In China, they know that when they have an enemy, they can cross the border, but if they have a, a Natural apostolic, the, the people not able to uh, cross this border. So they construct a uh, construction that make artificial border that uh, make the enemy not able to access. They simulate what is in, in the nature. So even now in our uh, modern life, everything we do actually is a can come from creative idea. Our clothes, our uh, glasses, uh, everything we said here is was creative either one day before. And now with the human creativity goes so far. We have uh, aeroplane to, to fly. We have uh, 
uh, drawn to very uh, important cities, so we have very uh, important, uh, beautiful uh, building. We have very fast car, and we have a computer which simulates actually the most important thing, the, uh, the, the thinking process of human. So the creativity is very important for human society, and they are creative by nature. This is why we uh, control the world. Why we are needs uh, the human needs creativity? Actually, as we know from psychology, one of the most important motivation for human uh, action is survival. Human is survival, they try to become uh, the natural dangers so they can uh, survive as a race. So they, they, they all create the idea, uh, a lot of them come to, to defend uh, their survival. They have, until now, this scheme in even research grants. If you have now, do you know the, grant, the research grant, you will found most of the uh, go to medical or military research because they keep the human survive from the enemy. The other thing why we are creative, actually we, we also enhance human welfare. We, 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 more, we need more easy and durable life, so we try to make life more durable and easy. Try to create a new idea that facilitates our uh, life or we make it more durable. We have uh, a cinema, we have video, we have uh, uh, more easy uh, games, so we can enjoy the life. All this creativity actually comes from 1.3 kilogram, which is a uh, brain, which is very complicated nervous system. And actually, uh, they found they have a lot of function, and this function assigned it to uh, its part in the, the brain. The creative thinking after a lot of research they found actually it's coming from the interaction of different parts of the brain. It's not uh, belong to certain parts of the brain, as some people was uh, actually believe before. But it's an interaction between the brain function. And it's very uh, important to try to uh, use all the function to, to have a creative idea. Why is creativity is very important in physics? Um, actually, when we do research, we're trying uh, to find out to, uh, a rule or to find out a solution for the problem in basic and applied research. And when you try to solve this problem, actually we're doing no more than creative uh, uh, activities. We try to, uh, looking, asking which in a creative way, we're trying to solve the problem in a creative way, to have experiments set up in a creative way, so we have something in you. So actually, even in the university uh, physics book, he said in first two ways that physics is the most creative uh, area in research because you need to have all the creative idea to have this uh, uh, research done. Uh, in industry, now we actually have a lot of industrial problem, as we see, for example, in Toyota problem in cars or many cars. So people to solve this problem, they need to reduce the cost, have very effective solution, and you need a creative way to, to have this uh, uh, solution. At the same time, to make a new product, actually it's a process of new product, no more than creative idea. So in physics, actually, when we deal with the industry, we have to have a creative uh, activities to solve this problem and have a new product. The, in education, uh, actually we try to uh, creative in teaching of physics. I, I remember, for example, uh, professor, professor Jeff, very nice creative idea when he's using uh, uh, scratch uh, exam so help the student to know immediately the, the result of the, the result uh, of the exam at the same time we have a Feynman lecture when he was creatively trying to explain physics for example the story of boy and uh, conservation of energy he was using creative to deliver the information and to make the student have more insight than that, that's a problem Creativity or creative uh, activities is a conjunctive, uh, a conjunctive ability, and a conjunctive ability actually have the uh, most of it like intelligent, and the intelligent we have uh, actually uh, activities like thinking and uh, uh, creative thinking. One of these conjunctive ability. to understand the the rule uh, or how the, the process of creative idea come to our mind. 
the psychology when she studies the rule of behavior through using scientific methodology, and he actually, like physics, she tried to find the rule, but the behavior of human and the brain uh, behavior of the human. Uh, in, the, in this psychology, they found the, as a human, as an intelligent species, they defined the intelligent as the ability to acquire, recall, and use knowledge to understand concrete and abstract concepts and relationships among objects and the idea, and to use the knowledge in a meaningful way. This is the most uh, uh, accepted for many psychologists as the definition for intelligence. And they found that actually intelligence is reflected, uh, have multi-dimension. Some people is have more intelligence in uh, social life, so they can find a good friendship, they can find uh, a lot of uh, harmony with people. Some is creative more in mathematical logic, so they can become a very good uh, mathematician. Or they have a verbal and they become a lawyer or teacher. So the intelligent activity have a lot of many dimensions and they interpret in our uh, all activities in different way. Uh, in intelligent, we actually have, they found that intelligent can be, uh, have two component correlated type of intelligence. We have crystallized intelligence uh, and uh, uh, fluid intelligence. In crystallized intelligence, the ability, we have the ability to apply previous acquired knowledge to current the problem. Actually, when we solve a problem many times or similar problem, our brain to play, uh, begin to save the scheme of the solving the problem in our short uh, or long range memory. So when you have the problem again, you actually don't have a lot of over because you recall from your brain the scheme of solving the equation or the, the problem and you very easily solve the problem. They call that this crystallized intelligence. And because we, uh, when we are young, we, our intelligence is most not crystallized intelligence, but as we grow in the age of experience, our intelligent crystallizing increases. So we have a lot of experts, for example, this strategic physicist, he can by looking solve any uh, theoretical equation because he developed a lot of scheme and restored in his uh, long range memory. But in fluid intelligence, actually the ability to deal with novel problem solving situation for which his personal experience does not uh, provide a solution, we using uh, inductive and uh, abstract like creative thinking, problem technique, because we don't have the scheme. We actually using short range memory as a board when we can blame around to, to solve the problem. And they found that, for example, if you're using paper and pen, you accident your uh, short range memory, and this helps you to find very quick, uh, easy solution. So the fluid intelligence as correlated to crystallized intelligence. But we, when we are young, actually, we use more fluid intelligence because we don't have skin. But as we age increasing, uh, we actually begin to develop crystallized intelligence and we don't use more fluid intelligence. So with age, we use crystallized intelligence more, less fluid intelligence. Fluid intelligence and uh, the process of finding a solution is the thinking. So they, they found in psychology that thinking is a process by which a new mental representation is formed, so the transformation of information by complex interaction is a mental attribute of judging, abstracting, reasoning, engine, and problem solving, they call it thinking process. Thinking process, the process actually have two kinds. They have a, a convergent thinking process, and they have convergent, uh, divergent thinking process. Uh, in conversion thinking process, the process of going directly to the solution of a problem, such as recording a factual uh, information. If I ask a student what is Newton's first rule, he uh, going to his memory, long memory, and trying to find the location of the information. So it's easy, direct, convert way to find thinking to, to find the solution. The other way of thinking is diversion thinking. In this case, actually, the process of generating of many different solutions besides normal one. If I ask you a very famous technique, uh, how many use of pen not in writing, or how many use of cup not in drinking, trying to find abstracting many function uh, away from the normal function of the object. 
in physics, for example, if you're asking some student who working in the optics, for example, and how many different uh, uh, many different fields you can use the idea of wave away from your field of uh, study, he said, okay, uh, optics is an electromagnetic wave, but we have sound is a, a mechanical wave. We have a magnetic uh, spin wave inside the material. We have uh, a seismic wave in the earth. We have compression. So we have a lot of wave in nature actually with the same principle, but away from his uh, main domain of, uh, of work, which become optics, for example, or sound, for example. So in this case, you try to find uh, another use of the, away from the normal one for him. This is called divergent thinking. In creative thinking, which is uh, part from our thinking, which our target today to understand, they found is a, a constructive activities that result in a new or novel way of viewing a problem or situation, which is result of using the version thinking to break normal schemes and generate a novel idea that away from normal. So we in this creative thinking, we use actually diversion thinking and try to be our, break the normal scheme, uh, try to find uh, more new insights of problem. Kai in 1997 actually uh, said, I said, it's come, according to Kai, this is by being able to apply concept or proposition uh, from one domain to another unrelated domain in the way to produce a new site. This is the most important thing in creativity. We try to apply concept or proposition from one domain to another unrelated domain in the way of new uh, site. It is very important to understand that creative idea not coming from nothing. Getting something from nothing. We have to have another idea from one field and just the, our creativity to move this idea from this field to another uh, different away from it. <coughs> the creation, uh, the creativity process actually, they found it to uh, have four sequential stage. And Wallace in 1996, uh, uh, 1926, uh, 26, he found that the first stage for creative process, uh, first stage actually preparation, formulating the problem and trying to solve it by looking for similarity to previously solved the problem also looking for the possible uh, possibility of modifying it to suit other familiar one. In this process, you set up the problem in your mind. If you work hard to solve the problem, trying to uh, modify it, to, and actually many times it's very, if it's a very new problem, you will not find easy the solution. In this case, you go to the another stage. The second stage is incubation. You actually leaving the problem aside and doing other activity, at this stage the problem is being worked on the subconscious level. For instance, your uh, personal knowledge database is searching for a solution. Why you actually don't solve the problem, your mechanical activities, it's in subconscious. Your mind trying to solve, searching in all knowledge you know about similarity or solution or anything. After this stage actually, we have elimination stage. After the incubation period, and in the instant, the solution of the problem being to shine due to conversions of idea. Find like that, you, you have all of us have this experience because we are all, of, all of us is uh, creative. Many times you study any problem or you have any issue, and while you uh, sleeping or while you are doing something other, do you find like that it's a shining idea? to solve this uh, issue. The final stage for creative process actually is the verification. You have to, usually you have, always you have to test and carry out the solution to see if your solution that you get from your process of creative idea is working or not. Uh, so we will uh, give you some example. And here actually we will watch a movie, but because unfortunately the following movie contains not the scan, so you're the scan is advised to understand the case. <laughs>
you, Brown, we celebrate a time of peace. Let us hope that it shall last for many generations. So, Archimedes, this new crown is splendid, don't you think? What do you think of it? It's a work of art. What is it? Nothing. Well, it, it seems to me that the kettle of the gold is not quite so rich as it was when it was first given to the smith. Well, surely the working in the metal changed the color somewhat. But then, most gold is of a hue like this. Perhaps. What are you suggesting? My king, I believe you may have been deceived. Deceived? But that's impossible. We weighed the gold before, and the crown weighs exactly the same amount as the original block of gold. Yes, but it's possible that the gold was mixed with some other metal, so there would be a few pounds of gold left over. Can you prove this? No. I, uh, I don't see how it could be proven. But there must be a way. If there is, I'll find it. Well, if you'll excuse me, my king. Of course. Thank you for your counsel. Archimedes? Yes? You may need this. The volume needs to be turned into somehow, but then maybe that can be done mathematically. Tricky geometry, though, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Let's... <sighs> I can't find it. All I'm saying, old fellow, you really know how to spell yeah, Euclid? Over there. Hello, Archimedes. How's your work on that? Crown going. I haven't found a solution. Well, I haven't found a solution yet. Oh, but you will? It, it doesn't make sense. Volume is calculated by measuring dimensions. It's simple to determine the volume of a brick of gold, but this crown, I, I can't find a solution. Archimedes? Maybe you should go back to designing war weapons. Well, the next time you're given an assignment by the king himself, I'm sure you'll have a good time trying to solve it. No, no. Calm down, Archimedes. Go, go, go take a bath. Go take a bath? Eureka! 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 I found it! So what have you discovered, Archimedes? We know that silver is less dense than gold. We know that because silver is less dense, gold with silver mixed in it will have a greater volume than a block of solid gold with the same weight. So, I can determine the volume of the crown by putting it into a basin of water. I fill this basin with enough water so that when a block of gold equal in weight to the crown is placed in the basin, the water level in the basin rises to just below the brim. Now, if the crown is pure gold, when I place it into the basin, the water will rise to the same level. If it is not pure gold, the volume will be greater and the barrel will overflow. So I've been cheated, then. Yes, I'm afraid so, my king. The smith who did this, what will become of him? What do you advise? I think that he has likely suffered enough already from the accusations. So it is then, all is well. A beautiful crown, a great discovery, and a new era. Oh, by the way, did you see my new statue? <laughs> see the resemblance? It's made of pure gold, too. Hmm. So, we see this assembly moving actually the four stage as well as uh, following. We have the first stage when we try to solve the problem, we try to uh, solve the problem from all the knowing. Uh, mission to solve this problem, but he didn't find the solution. And he's going to 
the second stage is incubation when he left the problem and trying to go to pass. So when he takes the pass, actually his mind was blocking him subconsciously about how they, how he could solve the problem. And when he go to side the pass, he found that the problem of finding the volume is the same as what he's doing now. He's going inside the water and he, the volume increases. Also, his shape is not regular. So he, in this time, his mind catch the similarity of the energy between the, the field of the taking the mass and the field of measuring the volume. And when he has this similarity, his mind says, OK, this is the moment. It's an uh, elimination point. We found the solution. And then he makes a, the verification for the solution, and he was able to find the new science. So we, what we learned from this, this is actually a true story. It's very famous in the history of uh, science. So what do you think is the most important thing we learned from that? I think the most important thing never become creative when you go to take a test. In the history of physics, actually, uh, a lot of creative ideas coming from the same uh, creative thinking process. We know about the problem of black matter radiation, and actually, in Nobel Prize uh, lecture of uh, uh, Planck, uh, he was trying uh, to explain how the idea came to his mind. And actually, uh, as we know, this problem is still for a long time was very a good uh, expert scientist in, in thermodynamics to solve the problem, but they're not able to solve the problem because it's not existed for, in the science of thermodynamics, uh, a solution for such a problem. And he found the way that actually due to uh, mathematical, uh, uh, mathematical effects, he took and he found due to the comparing the, the curve structure with some of thermodynamic uh, uh, entropy function of uh, what is man, uh, entropy function, he found the similarity of exponential and that the energy somehow uh, compared to a constant multiplied by energy. But with experimental uh, facts that the way they try to find the solution, and they found that experimental vein blue, which tried to find the, some uh, relation between the, uh, the one lens, they found that they have extreme case when they have very low and extreme case when he have high, uh, uh, very high wavelengths. And comparing the, the exponential with this new experimental fact and with mathematical, you know, mathematics knowledge away from the thermodynamic, he found that the only solution that make uh, energy equal to uh, HMU, discrete uh, of energy. In this case, he able to solve the problem by connecting some mathematics uh, knowledge he know with a thermodynamic statistical mechanism of this man with some fact. And to connect this idea, he was able to find a solution which actually very difficult for even the most expert people in this uh, After he discovered HMU equal as a uh, quantization of energy, he uh, still uh, stay for a long time, try to find uh, physical uh, interpretation. In the same age, was Max uh, Einstein was young. He was uh, studies the uh, Brownian motion, and actually he was interested in the problem of photoelectric effect. When they actually found that also when electro uh, electromagnetic wave uh, incident on the metal, they have electron. And there is nobody able to solve the problem because he using the knowledge of electromagnetic wave, right? All the, 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 the ways they know to, to solve this problem, but they are not fail to accept it. To, to solve the problem, Einstein actually, uh, because he's a hard worker, he reading the work of uh, Planck, he takes the idea of HMU quantization, and he said, okay, we know that light is a wave, and we have interference experiment, we have diffraction experiment, but in this case, if we're using this idea of quantization, and we have a particle uh, explanation, we go to solve the problem. And very easily, by, by copying the idea, 
from one field which becomes thermodynamic to the electromagnetic shear, he solves the problem and was very important in the history of the physics. So he, he makes the, the creative process. He takes the idea from some another domain, applied to the other domain. In the same, uh, in 1913, the same period, actually Max uh, Boer was a graduate student, uh, postdoc with Rutherford, who makes a model of uh, classical uh, atom, but he's using the classical mechanics and to uh, modulate the uh, model the atom uh, to explain the experimental of uh, Rutherford uh, student experiment. And actually his model failed because it's not satisfying. So uh, Max Boer uh, was actually talking with his friend, and one his, of his friends uh, pointed his, uh, to the Palomar series when they found out the, the description for the frequency of hydrogen lines and connecting the number, integral number of the equation of uh, power series with uh, just discovered quantization of blank uh, theory, connected these two facts and put them to the, the field of atomic structure, he was able to find, by connecting these two facts with atomic, find the quantization of quantum, uh, quantization of momentum and able to find the model that uh, explains the power series. Very successfully, he linked two information from another subdomain and what he did. Do you know when you're talking about? People after the succeed of poor uh, model actually to explain Palmer series, but not satisfied with the idea of quantization of momentum. They don't know why it's happening and they don't have explanation. Uh, actually, Dr. Blay was a uh, great student. And he also was not satisfied, so he tried to find uh, explanation for this uh, succeed of Bohr's theory. And he found that very simply, okay, we deal with atomic structure, which are particles, as we know, but uh, Bohr using the quantization of moment, uh, momentum, which come from blank. And he said, okay, but Einstein using the same idea to solve the photoelectric effect. And we know that photoelectric effect comes from electromagnetic wave uh, light, which actually wave by nature. And he found that we have to put particle uh, properties for the photo, uh, for the electromagnetic wave. He said, okay, if we apply the same idea here of we have a particle, but we put uh, wave properties, and we have from wave properties, we have, when we have uh, standing wave, we have integral number. And in this case, he was very easily uh, using the same formulation of line and using the idea of Einstein, linked it to the succeed of Bohr uh, and found that uh, even the matter have wave properties and we have a duality of a wave particle in the atomic scale. And we, uh, he was successful to experiment, uh, able to find that these properties apply by the same formula and by creating, by, by linking these two different uh, ideas from different fields, it was able to solve uh, the problem. <coughs> actually, at the same time when Dubrovnik made his model, and, and actually, the uh, concept of model physics also is also not much very nice because you have a lot of story about that. Paul uh, was talking to his colleague about the uh, uh, new idea of the Bourguignon and basically told him, okay, in this case, if the Bourguignon was right, we need a Maxwell equation but for particle. We need wave equation but for particle. And he, the idea was shining in his mind and he began to work hard to find this wave equation. So he was able to find the equation that able to reduce the hydrogen atom uh, series and we discovered uh, the shortening the equation. In this case, he linked the Maxwell equation with the wave properties of the Bourguignon from different fields and then he produced the idea of finding the wave equation. Uh, historically, after they found the wave nature of particles, uh, they know that the material has a crystalline structure and because electron and particle have wave properties, they can uh, work actually with that, okay, we have a wave, uh, 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 wave function.
functions in Excel uh, with functions that it describes uh, electron compartments as a sense of material. And because in the crystalline material we have a periodic structure, this wave function will pass through the periodic structure, and when you have the work one little function, he was able to find out the band structure of the crystal. So from the idea of applying the wave like optics diffraction inside the crystal, he found that the electronic properties of material can be uh, translated to band when we have a band here for semiconductor or a uh, very high band for insulator or uh, very small to uh, to uh, metals. Recently, they said, okay, the same idea, we understand it's not very hard, the solid crystal, we're able to fabricate semiconductor, we're able to have uh, industrial revolution because we understand this uh, solid crystal because the wave nature of electron. But actually, the idea of wave nature of electron is smooth, it's the same for electromagnetic wave. If you have electromagnetic wave, they have already wave properties. Why? Why will not, not apply this concept to electromagnetic waves? In this case, actually, they found that the periodic, uh, periodic structure of dielectric constant can create a photonic band gap material. And now, in this research, trying to copy all the idea from solid state to find photonic material, photonic uh, uh, structure that will help us to have uh, very enhanced electronic and the devices. We now come to uh, applying uh, the creative thinking process idea. We have this uh, example here. They found that in biology and theology are considered by many uh, the rich source of energy for which significant computation can be derived. Here is the list of animal and computation things that by to try matching the animal with the computation. And I will left one minute or two, so we have paid here Armour and Dawn. Uh, I will be there, flying squirrel, map partial, radar, helicopter, tank. So if you search for the analogy, you will find the solution in the same Okay, it's very easy. Pets is very uh, the same idea of radar. Army drone is very same idea of tank. We have Hyman Bird is very idea, the same idea of uh, helicopter, and flying square is the same idea. Another uh, famous example of applying creative uh, thinking, when we're asking the, any person to the, solve the problem, draw four straight line, so the line goes without cracking and without lifting your brain from the paper. Actually, if you try to do that, do that in your home, it will take from you uh, a long time to find a solution. It's looking for why people don't find a solution for this problem. Actually, one of the most important most uh, to create the idea that we sometimes put restriction which does not exist in the problem itself. The key to the solution this imaginary, uh, is that the imaginary boundary uh, formed by the dot need not be observed. If you remove from your mind that the line you draw has to pass to the boundary of the plot, the solution becomes very simple. And once you go, remove this restriction, the solution come in this way. You have here, yeah, it's very simple. So when you have a problem, you have to try to remove the restriction which won't exist in the problem. Actually, scientists would actually found another solution, very simple solution. If you realize that you're not necessary to draw, uh, to, to move through the center of all the lot, you have a very, very simple solution. You need only three. But because in our mind, we, we, we imagine that we have to pass through this uh, center of the dot. We will not need it. So this is very simple. Uh, this is a very uh, good example in the active learning. Uh, actually, Anderson was studying the metal uh, insulator transition and how the conductivity of metal go to zero through uh, increasing the impurity inside the, the material. And he found that, after a lot of study, that he found that, okay, so the wave properties of electron, uh, when the electron wave properties can go inside the material and found two scattering objects, for example, yeah, and P, 
and they can make uh, the wave going in one place and going uh, reflected in the other place such that they have a constructive interference in point the A. In this case, the electron become like a standing wave and they localize it in the A, so he don't have the mobility. And because he don't have the mobility, he become a sileto. So he found, they provide that by experimental, and the amazing thing, after we understand this idea. So if I ask you, in how many different fields you can use the idea of Anderson localization? Because simply we talk about uh, wave properties, they found, because it's wave, we can apply it to any wave we have. Sound wave, uh, magnetic wave, any wave, if you have scattering inside the material, you actually will have certain, uh, uh, similar situation, and we will have uh, actual uh, uh, localization. Uh, in this paper, in physics today, actually, in August 2009, they celebrate 50 years, and show how the physicist, with long time, they able to apply the same uh, method to all wave, uh, a kind of wave, like magnetic wave inside the material, light wave. So this is one of the most important things. Try to apply some knowledge from one field to another, not other field, to find the solution. Come the, the research. Okay, all people are creative by nature, but how to enhance, how to enhance the creative of the uh, thinking of the people? Actually, how is a psychological scientist I actually, after the analysis of many experiments and many data about creative thinking and models, he found that very simply, if we're helping people to develop a broad knowledge database, because uh, as we said now, creative actually not create some idea from no sense. You have to have another knowledge. So if you have to be more creative, you have to have a broad knowledge. And they actually found there is a big relationship between hard worker people and creativity. When they are hard work, read a lot in many fields, uh, solve in many fields, uh, working in many fields, so in this case they have a good knowledge and they can pick up idea from one field to other field. <coughs> the second thing he talked about is uh, creating the right atmosphere for creativity. Why some people are not creative in the natural environment? Because sometimes there is a restriction. So they actually sustain according to this a very important suggestion is they have a brainstorm session when the people to sit together and try to have a brainstorm uh, without any restrictions to talk of any ideas that come to their mind. So this is the way they can get more creative uh, ideas. The same thing, uh, he said, okay, try to train the people to search for analysis to solve problems. If, for example, uh, if the student working in uh, sound, Acoustic wave, we can ask him to look for a solution to all this uh, wave uh, problem. Because in this case, he tried to find the analogy with the wave from what is here. Uh, if you uh, make any uh, uh, face a problem, for example, in solid state, you can go to the optics because there is a wave uh, nature here. So when the student or the people uh, train themselves to looking for and actually between the problems they face and the other knowledge they can pick up the um, As we said, it's actually in many countries like USA, they consider that creative thinking uh, is one of the most resources for their country. And they have actually a lot of institution uh, for study creative and trying to fostering creative inside the uh, education system. Uh, Hamza and Gleves actually makes this research paper, uh, forcing problem solving and creative thinking in the classroom. And they study for one year the factors that fostering problem solving in the classroom. The study actually was done at the college in the state of Texas uh, in university. Uh, in theory, uh, they have about three in this paper, actually you can find a lot of details, but they have about uh, four, uh, five stages for study. First stage, they go to the college, they can interview with the professor, with the student, and from that they know from their interview with the answer to the question, uh, the student can give them the idea who the professor who fostering the candidate in their classes. After they make this uh, analysis, they found the most uh, 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 professor who create the frosting uh, candidate in the classes, and 
then they go to this crisis trying to find and find the, the factors that frosting can make the crisis. And they found that spinning effect is very important to frosting. Classroom planets. They found this one of the most important factors. Uh, when the frosting uh, creates simply, the class supposed to be open, comfortable, relaxing, challenging, safe, supportive, humorous, energizing, and cooperative. They have uh, also teacher character traits. It's approachable, personable, uh, creative, caring, flexible, knowledgeable, uh, uh, energetic, interesting, uh, motivating, uh, leader, uh, original. We have this all attribute of the student, of the teacher, help him to foresee the creative thinking in the class. Student attitude. Actually, uh, student attitude when actually some students don't have the attitude, so the teacher tries to display his respect towards the student who asked and we should reach and discuss with them and they can try to accept the uh, opinion and try to make the attitude of the student through the subject to increase the attitude by making them have uh, a lot of uh, respect when they study the subject. The second thing, classroom management, they found the teacher who actually ability, have the ability to manage the conflict and to minimize the disturbance uh, and to design very uh, physical setup of the classroom and to create an innovative those activity which actually uh, makes the, the uh, uh, manage the classroom smoothly and increase the creativity of teaching. Uh, creative thinking is a good student. Teacher knowledge. Teacher should they found that when the teacher have in depth and rich uh, specificity of knowledge is the subject of matter and student of study of the teaching to see the they need to foster that belief in the teacher uh, who uh, when he attitude towards the student object and teaching the teacher who enjoys the most attitude towards the student and subject to maintain some way actually uh and in the study and resulting in the rest of the subject to uh, Teacher student inter interaction in the classroom uh, have a lot of possibility and when this interaction going to the direction of hosting the native uh, elements. Teaching the uh, style, the teacher uses the best music as strategy and it's a piece of the beginning and native discussion and limits and the current small group uh, interaction can mitigate the uh, student curiosity. Uh, actually, they summarize the result. Okay. Uh, they found that the, the benefits for teacher, certain for student, and the interaction between them is this narrow circle. The product which is university creativity is the interaction between the circuit and the, the triangle. And actually all this not having is a uh, uh, rectangular which represents the classroom and the shadow which uh, represents the planet. So they found in classroom when the administration and the community can feed actually uh, the interaction besides between students and uh, Student, and as we increase that to, uh, to be professor and teacher, and the student increasing the attitude and basic signal to the student by solving the problem and all these things, he was simply if we increase the uh, teacher and at the same time increasing the uh, uh, student attitude and basic signals, the interaction will increase as the uh, frosting product which becomes dot. Uh, this will be very increasing. Uh, actually, Gu uh, Ping and uh, uh, Gu and uh, some scientists in uh, uh, study uh, uh, in their paper in Science 299, the learning and scientific reasoning. How we can increase scientific reasoning uh, learning in the classes? And to make these studies, they have 
uh, testing the Chinese and uh, United States under uh, grad school uh, student, uh, where the United States actually don't take uh, don't take a formal study of the United States formal study of physics subject, but they take the physics through the science uh, courses. But in China, they take about four years of intensive uh, work in uh, physics. They study mechanics, electromagnetic, special and And when they have very special test, uh, standard test for uh, measure the knowledge contained in mechanics, they found that the Chinese have very big in near from 90 for the score of mechanics. Why is the uh, USA, they, they have this broad and very low and it's actually compatible with the education system because they don't take a lot of courses in mechanics, they take uh, courses of science. It's the same for electromagnetism, actually. We have a peak very near from the high for uh, Chinese. And for USA, it's very uh, big here, but it's the same, which actually also provides a uh, teaching, uh, teaching uh, style of the United States. But when they compare the reasoning cycles uh, from both of these uh, countries, they found this, the both United States and China, uh, uh, amazingly, they have the same, uh, the same scientific reasoning. And they found this actually coming because most of education system for science or engineering or mathematics actually stress contain knowledge delivery, not reasoning skill. Uh, training and they make this complaint that what can researcher and uh, educator do to help students develop scientific reasoning ability? The relation between instruction methods and the development of scientific reasoning have been widely studied and actually they put a lot of reference for these studies and should have shown that acquired based science instruction promotes scientific reasoning ability. So when we increase the required basic a component in our uh, teaching, it will be increase the uh, scientific reasoning ability of the student. Uh, actually, this conclusion is done also by Karen in uh, 1960 when he tried to uh, promote or try to find a way to create his uh, in uh, physics classes. Uh, actually, he did he do, he do the talk is a science fair and he said in the as a conclusion from the creative uh, thinking model that we have to make uh, activities that make the student not trying to find a solution but to have a lot of equation. Using all these uh, all these uh, using all these methodology Actually, I was trying to sign a uh, lesson that helps students to uh, promote them for creative or divergent thinking. And I, I done this uh, 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 example in the teaching support center, and the student actually was, uh, uh, feedback was good, which was actually a great student like me, give me a good feedback about the way I give the, this uh, example. So we have watching the movie, but I think that we do now. It started with a buzz. Turned into a roar. And became a phenomenon. Called Lost. Wednesdays this summer. I've just been through a trauma here, okay? We've all been through a trauma. We're stranded on an island. No one's coming for us. Do you think we're being punished? Punished for what? Things we did before. The secrets we kept. The lies we told. We can't live together. After the student watches the movie, I said to him, okay, imagine the two worlds of one is the same aeroplane of the, the most uh, serious. And you actually based on the uh, simple ocean, your car uh, crashed, 
and you are now in the Ingrisi Island, to build your good emergency boat, because when you have in the Pacific Ocean, you have very good boat to be able to survive, to, to go to another destination. You need to make an measurement for your construction. So I asked the student, use your environment to construct a lens measurement system. And it was actually the creative. Some of them use the finger, some part from the body for, for the measurement. Some of them actually create some basis of paper as a standard rule. And one of them using the pen for the, uh, as a measurement tools. And then I asked them, after they choose the unit, they asked them, what is your uh, unit for lens? And they make a uh, lens measurement for one object, actually. I, I choose for them to choose the width and the, along the width of the, the desk and maybe the, the length. So they have two different measurements, one for small object and one for large object. When they compare, the, sometimes you need some multiplier of unit and sometimes you need a fraction of unit. So they realize the importance of this. And after that, they, I said to them, after they make these uh, uh, activities, you discovered other people, they built the, some of the boat and to cooperate together you need to convert your lens unit to the next unit. And it was actually very, uh, it's like a uh, very heavy activity because you make them live inside the series, become part of the imagination. And when they try to, com to convert, they sit together and try to make a conversion between uh, the unit with the different unit. And after they found the, uh, the way to converge of conversation, it's actually way not given to them by the textbook or professor, but the way they discover by themselves to have to convert the, the lenses. And then I asked them, okay, express your object to the, by the end of your uh, colleague, so he, you can uh, cooperate together. And after that, I meet one of the two students who make this comparison for every two students. They make all the students come together and try to discuss which uh, next unit uh, was the best one. And why is the reason they choose this best one. And it was a very uh, good, uh, actually, uh, experience. This part is discussion how we can foresee creative thinking in a situation. So, what is the idea you can have to foresee? Thank you and especially Egyptian and the friend who helped me to